Hi guys, I've got a great video for you today all about bar chords, but this one's going to be a bit different. Welcome to Dave's Guitar Club, love music, learn music, make music. Today I have a guest on the channel. So my friend Jamie, who has a fantastic YouTube channel called Jamie Holroyd Guitar, this week we've decided that we're going to do something a bit different. We're going to do a collaboration. So he's made a video all about bar chords and he's going to show you some songs that use bar chords and have great chord progressions. I decided that I didn't want to watch Jamie's video until after I'd filmed this intro. So I'm really intrigued and I'm really looking forward to finding out what songs and what bands he's going to include in this video. I'm going to leave it with you, Jamie. So I'll see you guys at the end. Cheers, Dave. Great to be on the channel. In this lesson, I'm going to help you guys master your bar chords by showing you three different chord progressions which are hopefully going to help you transform these difficult and challenging chord grips into something musical which will inspire you to keep on practicing. Just before we get started, I need to make sure that you guys are comfortable with both of these two things. The first is open position chords. If I'm asking you to play chords like E minor, D, G and C and you don't know what they are and you can't get them clean, then you need to make sure that you've got your open position chords nice and comfortable first. The second thing is power chords. If you know a few different power chord shapes up and down the guitar neck, that's gonna make bar chords much, much easier. The first bar chord progression that we're going to be looking at is Can't Stop by the Red Hot Chili Peppers. This song uses four chords all the way through, so it's really easy to memorize and a great one to start with if you're completely new to bar chords. The four chords that you're gonna need are E minor, D, B minor, and C. To begin with, you want to play one bar of each of these chords. If you're completely new to bar chords, you might just want to strum once at the beginning of the bar just to practice switching between them like this. If you're more advanced, you might want to try out a fuller strumming pattern, perhaps something like this. So, what are we playing for the chord shapes? The first chord is an E minor, we're playing the root on the 7th fret of the A string and we're using our A minor chord shape. The second chord is a D major, our root is at the 5th fret of the 5th string and we're using our A major chord shape. You can either play this chord shape by replicating an A chord with the 2nd, 3rd and 4th fingers or you can simply plonky the ring finger or your pinky down to accommodate those as well. The choice is up to you. Beyond that we've got a B minor chord and here we're using the exact same shape as the E minor chord but we're moving this so it starts on a B to get that and then finally we're going back to a C major which is the same shape as D moved down two frets. Throughout this song you may notice that the timing of these chords does change. It starts off pretty easy in the fact that we've got one bar for each chord but in the chorus we then have two chords in one bar. That means that we have two strums on each chord rather than four. So you'll get something like this. So be careful when the chorus comes in because that part does require you to change between those bar chords much quicker. The second bar chord progression that we're going to be looking at here is Mardi Bump by the Arctic Monkeys. Dave mentions the Arctic Monkeys all the time on his channel and for good reason. They're a great band with some really good chord progressions. This one's in the key of D and we're starting on the 5th fret of the 5th string and we're going to be using the major chord shape as a basis. From that we're going up a major 3rd to F sharp. F sharp is there for the 9th fret of the A string and we're going to be using our major chord shape once again. And this interestingly is what you would call a secondary dominant in the key of D major. Typically you would think that this would go to a B minor, but it doesn't, it keeps on going up. And from that we go to a G major. So we've got that same chord shape that we're moving up twice. So there's our G note major chord shape. We're then going to move that down a semitone to F sharp minor and this is something kind of jazzy that the Arctic Monkeys do. I'm not sure if the Arctic Monkeys like jazz or not. 
But what's going on here is a back cycle to the two chord. We've got an F sharp minor, and then we come to E minor. E minor is the two chord in D, so this is why it's called a back cycle. We start on D, and all these chord progressions are building up to come back to E minor, which then goes back to D. Okay, so what you've got to watch out for is when you go to G here, that has two chords in one bar. You've got a G chord, and then it goes to an F sharp minor in the second half of the bar. So it goes one, two, three, four, then finishes on the E minor chord. So watch out for that. Okay, so when played in time, these chords will sound something like this. So that's the main part of the song. Now, the second part of the song uses some other bar chords as well. Here we're going to use some bar chords which have the root on the sixth string. We've got a G major bar chord here. G is the third fret of the low E string. We've got our E chord shape. This then slides up to an A bar chord, which is of course that same shape, moved up two frets, and it goes. So we've just got one bar of each chord in which we strung down once. After that, things get slightly more complex. We're back to that D major bar chord, and we're going to strum that twice, and then go to the A chord shape. So that's a good one to do to practice getting used to switching between different chord shapes. D, D, A. And then we go to a B minor, which we played in Can't Stop, and we hit that three times as well. Try it once more. Okay, so that entire section sounds like this. course then we're back into that main riff. Our third and final song is an absolute guitar classic. We're going to be looking at Hotel California by the Eagles. This chord progression is in a minor key and it just essentially goes one, five, one, five. And there is a jazz standard that's very, very similar, which I'm going to explain in just a minute. Hey, I'm a jazz guitarist. I've got to mention some jazz chords at some point, right? <laughs> okay, so this chord progression starts on a B minor chord here. Root is going to be on the 7th fret of the low E string, and then we're going to use the E minor chord shape like that, okay? So, that's the first chord of the song. Beyond that, we're going to go to an F sharp major bar chord. Of course, we did cover this in Mardi Bum already, so I'm not going to go over that one in too much detail. There's your F sharp, 9th fret of the A string, major bar chord shape. Now, what this chord progression does, which is very interesting, is it just repeats those movement down a turn. So we first have B minor to F sharp. Those chords down a turn, if we now make the first chord major, A to E, that's one to five in the key of A. One, five, one, five. This pattern keeps on going so that in the key of G, we also have one to five. After that, we have something different. We have just an E minor, and then we go to an F sharp afterwards. So to go over those chords in a bit more detail, I've got B minor, E minor chord shape, root on the seventh fret of the low E string. F sharp major, A major chord shape, F sharp root on the A string. A major, E major chord shape, root on the E string. E major, A major chord shape, root on the A string. G major, E major chord shape, root on the low E string. D major, A major chord shape, root on the A string there. And the last two chords, E minor I'm playing up here, that's from Mardi Bum, and F sharp is also from Mardi Bum as well. The good thing about this chord progression is that to begin with, you can play it slow. This song has a beautiful intro, which is well worth checking out by the way, and you can strum along to that just by basically strumming the chords one chord per bar behind the original guitar part. I think that guitar part goes through once or twice, and after it's gone through once or twice, then the thing picks up in time, so you can apply a more full strumming pattern, perhaps something like this. work quite well so you can transition between do two different strumming patterns in the same song so that's a good way in which you can practice these bar chords 
Finally, I'd just like to share with you a little jazz fact. There's a jazz standard called How Insensitive, which has a very similar chord progression to Hotel California by the Eagles. Whether or not the Eagles acknowledge this, I have no idea, but it's an interesting point regardless. As I've already said, Hotel California basically goes one to five, then one to five down a turn. How Insensitive is very much the same, except rather than have one bar of one chord, we actually have two bars of one chord and then two bars of the five chord. I'll play a little bit of How Insensitive. Let me know in the comment section below. Do you think that this sounds anything like Hotel California? Can you hear a difference or am I completely trying to see the jazz in anything? Of course, I am a jazz guitar player, so I don't think Dave could expect me to get through an entire video of at least mentioning some jazz handling. Here's How Insensitive. that was just played in D minor so I'm going to bring it to the same key as Hotel California I'm going to play Hotel California with a bossa nova feel and then I'm going to play it with a more traditional feel to see if the difference is more apparent let me know in the comments what you think okay so here's how insensitive in the key of B minor What do you think? I'd be interested to hear your thoughts. I hope that you've all enjoyed working through these chord progressions and they inspire you to practice your bar chords a little bit. I'd like to thank Dave for having me a guest on his channel. He has some fabulous lessons and if you did enjoy this lesson, I ask that you give it a like and subscribe obviously to Dave's channel. And if you'd like to find anything more about me and the jazz work that I do, then there is a link to my channel in the video description below. Thanks for watching. Wow, Jamie, that was awesome. I mean, I've really enjoyed that. I especially like that Chili Peppers chord progression. It's a, a real favorite of mine. So I hope you guys have learned a lot from that as well. Make sure you do check out Jamie's channel too, which is gonna be linked in the description box below. Jamie really does make great lessons. And as I said before, I've been watching his videos for years. So make sure you head over there and subscribe to his channel as well. Um, I've made a video for Jamie's channel too, which I've linked on the screen now. So thanks again, Jamie. It's been a real pleasure to have you on here. Let me know if you guys wanna see some lessons about bar cards on this channel. And thanks again for watching and I'll see you next time.